Lesson 2.9 Word Problems, Multi-Step Multiplication Problems. We can use the strategy, draw a diagram to help us solve a multi-step multiplication problem. A diagram will help us organize and visualize the information that is given. We can also use counters or make a list to help us solve word problems. Remember the steps to solving word problems. One, read the problem to figure out what we need to find. Maybe read more than once. Two, identify the information we need to use. Three, how will we use the information? We need to choose an operation or write an equation. And four, we solve, then check. And we can use low and high estimates to see if our answer is reasonable or use an inverse operation to check it. We can use what we know about arrays and multiplication to help us solve word problems involving rows and an amount in each row. So remember, rows go across. So we have three rows, and here there are five in each row. So we have three times five, which is equal to 15 in all. Lou planted eight rows of daffodils with 10 daffodils in each row. In each of the four middle rows, there are six pink daffodils. All of the other daffodils are yellow. How many of the daffodils are yellow? So the first thing we need to do is notice that we need the number of yellow daffodils. That's number one. That's what it's asking for. How many daffodils are yellow? Then we can use the information eight rows of 10 in each row and that the four middle rows have six pink daffodils. We can draw a diagram to visualize the problem. So here we used grid paper to visualize the problem and draw a diagram. We know that there are eight rows with 10 in each row. And it told us that in each of the four middle rows, so here's the four in the middle, that there are six pink in each of those four rows. We can multiply to find the total number of daffodils and the number of yellow daffodils. To find how many in all, we do eight times 10. There's 80 daffodils in all. Now we need to find the number of yellow ones. So we find the number of pink ones, four times six, which is 24 pink. Then we subtract to find the number of yellow daffodils. There's 80 in all minus the 24 pink ones. We have 56 yellow daffodils. We can use an inverse operation to check. 56 plus 24 is equal to 80, so we did our math correctly. We can also use counters to help us visualize a problem. There's four rows with five in each row. Okay, well, we have four rows and there's five in each row. In the center of each first two rows, so here's the first two rows up here, are three blue. See how they're in the center? The rest are red. How many are red? Well, we have four times five, so that's 20 in all. We have two times three for the blue, that's six. We do all of them, the 20 minus the six blue, and we know there's 14 red ones. The seats in section A and B are all taken for a show. Section A has six rows of 16 seats, and section B has eight rows of 18 seats. How many seats are in section A and B? We can draw and label a diagram to find the total number of seats. We need to do six times 16 and eight times 18. Then we need to add them together to find how many seats are in section A and B. We can use partial products to multiply. We start with the six and multiply it to the tens place. There's one 10. Six times 10 is 60. Now we multiply the six to the ones place. Six times six is equal to 36. 
and 60 plus 36 is equal to 96. So we know section A has 96 seats. Now we can use partial products to multiply 18 times 8. We do 8 times the 110, that's 80, and 8 times 8, which is 64. We add them and get 144. Now we can add these two sums together, 144 plus 96, it's equal to 240 in all. So we know there are 240 seats in all. Now it's asking us how many more seats are in section B than in section A. Well, we know section B has 144, and we know section A has 96. We subtract to find the difference. 144 minus 96 is equal to 48 more seats. We do our math. And we can add 48 plus 96 if it equals 144, we did our subtraction correctly. That would be using an inverse operation to check it, wouldn't it? Mr. Lee's vegetable garden has 15 rows of plants with nine plants in each row. He put tomatoes in the first two rows, corn in the last three rows, and green peppers in the middle rows. How many green pepper plants does he have? So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how many plants there are in all. We have 15 rows with 9 in each row. 15 times 9, we can multiply using partial products. 9 times 110 is 90. 9 times 5 is equal to 45. We add 90 plus 45 and find out he has 135 plants in all. We know there's tomatoes in the first two rows. So if that's two rows of tomatoes with nine in each row, we have two times nine. That's 18 tomato plants. And there's corn in the last three rows. So there's nine in each row, so we have three rows times nine in each row. That's 27 corn plants. And we can add 18 plus 27, and it's equal to 45. We subtract 135 minus the 45 corn and tomato and find that he has 90 green pepper plants. And in previous videos we've talked about how there's usually more than one way to solve a problem. We can also subtract the rows of tomato and corn from the 15 rows. We know there's two rows of tomato, there's three rows of corn, there's 15 rows in all, we can do the 15 rows minus the rows of tomato and the rows of corn, and we get 10 rows. And if there's 9 in each row, 10 times 9 is equal to 90 green peppers. We found another way to solve the same problem, and we got the same answer. Sanjay, Bob, and Louise each own a dog. Sanjay's dog weighs 8 pounds more than Bob's dog, Louis's dog weighs four pounds more than twice the weight of Bob's dog. Bob's dog weighs 30 pounds. Find the weight of Sanjay's and Louis's dog. So we think Sanjay's and Louis's dogs are both being compared to Bob's dog. We know how much Bob's dog weighs. We think, okay, we can draw little circles on the side. We know Bob's dog is 30 pounds. We know Sanjay's is 8 pounds more than Bob's, so that's 30 plus 8. And it told us that Louis's dog is 4 pounds more than twice the weight of Bob's. So it's 4 more, 4 plus, twice the weight of Bob's, which would be 2 times that 30. So Sanjay's is 30 plus 8, so his dog is 38 pounds. And Lewis's dog is 4 plus 2 times 30. We do in the parentheses first. That's 60 plus 4 is 64 pounds. They were all being compared to Bob's dog and his weight. And that's how we found how much the other dogs weighed. We can use the strategy make a list to solve some word problems. Sophia has four shirts. Red, blue, brown, and green. She has two pairs of pants, one black and one white. 
How many different combinations of outfits can she make? We can make a list to figure it out. With the red shirt, she can wear black pants or she could wear the white pants. So that's two outfits. With the blue shirt, she could wear the black pants or the white pants. That's two more outfits. With the brown shirt, she could wear the black pants or the white pants. And same with the green shirt. We find out she can make eight different outfits. By making a list, it helped us visualize the problem and organize it to find the answer. Now, when you get into high school algebra, you're going to learn that problems like these are called combinatorics, and it's actually very easy to solve when you're trying to find combinations. You just do 4 times 2, which equals 8. Isn't that easy? We can use properties to solve word problems. The owner of a movie theater wants to replace all the broken seats. And there are 14 rows of seats with 20 seats in each row. And there are five rows that have two broken seats and four rows that have three broken seats. How many seats are not broken? So first we need to find how many seats there are in all. We know that there are 14 rows with 20 seats in each row. And we can multiply 14 times 20 by halving and doubling. We learned about that in video 2.8, the last video. We have 14 times 20. We can cut the 14 in half to a 7 and multiply it. That will give us 140. Then we double the 140. 140 times 2 is equal to 280 seats in all. And we can also use the distributive property to break apart the factor 14. We learned that in video 2.5. We have 14 times 20. We can think of it as 10 plus 4 times 20. We distribute the 20 to the 4 and to the 10. We've got 10 times 20 plus 4 times 20. 10 times 20 is 200. 4 times 20 is 80. We add them together and get 280 in all. The same answer we got when we used having and doubling. Next, we multiply to count the broken seats. It says there are five rows that have two broken seats. So we do five rows times the two broken seats. That's 10 broken seats. And that there are four rows with three broken seats. That's four rows times three broken seats. That's 12 broken seats. We add the broken ones together, 10 plus 12. That's 22 broken seats. We know there are 280 seats in all. We subtract the broken ones and we get 258 seats are not broken. So it's really important to notice that it said how many seats are not broken. When we do word problems, we want to make sure we're answering exactly what it asked of us. In our next lesson, 2.10, we're going to learn how to use regrouping to multiply a two-digit number by a one-digit number. This is how your parents learned to multiply. I hope I'll see you there and keep trying to do better every day. Bye.